Good morning, everyone, or good evening, depending on where you guys are in the world. <laughs> uh, my name is Bridget Graham. I'm the I'm CEO and founder of Organic Analytics. In today's session of webinar Wednesdays, we have Dr. Alicia Douglas Steele. Uh, she is a, the lead um, R&D scientist of molecular division of CEM Corporation. Uh, she'll be talking about today um, the rapid determination of cannabinoid uh, pesticides and heavy metals in cannabis. Um, Alicia has uh, worked over 20 years, and she has like a ton of experience, uh, over 20 years of experience in the field of molecular separation in a broad range of industries. Um, she's also worked with um, in the cannabis um, industry specifically for um, the last five years. Um, um, she's, at, she's actually been working on developing uh, extractions and analysis protocols for lab startups, um, lab, large testing lab facilities, and also combining her cannabis testing and the chromatic um, graphic separation. She's um, been instrumental in developing novel, uh, um, development of the novel systems. And I'm a little nervous, guys, and I don't, I know I'm not supposed to say that, but I don't really <laughs> do this that often, but um, just bear with me. But she, uh, she's, she's really, she's super smart. I, the, where I met her was our first convention. We host, um, my company, um, we host uh, cannabis conventions. Our hope is to help bring legitimacy to the cannabis industry through science and education. And uh, Alicia and her uh, company, they came down to our first uh, event in Atlanta uh, two years ago. Um, they will also be at the uh, convention in May of this um, next year. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so uh, go ahead and chat. Um, be Feel free to um, drop your questions in the chat. And uh, Leanne will uh, be collecting your questions. Uh, questions and she'll be they'll be answering them at the end um, let's see and also if you if you're attending this uh, our webinar you will get a copy of the recording and um, if you have any questions uh, and if you need their contact information you will also get that information as well so without further ado um, I would like to introduce Dr. Alicia Douglas Steele Thank you, Bridget, for that um, kind introduction and um, truly enjoyed um, meeting you two years ago at that event. And we look forward to the event coming this coming um, in the spring. Um, really excited to get back to an in-person event. So hoping 2022 is a great year as far as conferences are concerned. Um, so before I get too far into this, I will note I have a little bit of a cold right now, so I apologize um, for my voice or if I need to um, cough real quick. Um, I just, you know, sorry for that. I'm going to do my best to get through this as um, smoothly as possible. Um, so as noted, I'm going to be talking about the rapid determination of cannabinoids, pesticides, and heavy metals in cannabis. So that's a lot, guys. So I'm going to be going through a lot of different topics and then be hitting them at a fairly high level. Um, so definitely ask your questions if you want to know more details of any particular test, because um, I've only got an hour here and it's a lot to talk about. Um, I'll be specifically um, talking about um, instruments um, from CEM and Lucidity, which is a division of CEM. Um, so CEM is going to cover more of the sample preparation side of things and lucidity, the analysis side of things. And I'm excited um, because typically um, I don't get to cover the analysis, um, but with um, this um, lucidity as a division of CEM now, I'm able to talk about that. So that's going to be a nice addition to this presentation. Um, so I'm not going to go through a big um, introduction of what cannabis and hemp is. Um, I think we all know that at this point and why we're testing it and why these are hot topics and what the needs are. Um, I just wanted to put this slide up here um, to kind of cover my verbiage um, because I'll be just referring to cannabis throughout the whole presentation. 
but that refers to hemp as well. Um, I know a lot of people in the audience may be in states where um, cannabis is not legal, but hemp is. Um, so obviously this is a conversation for all of us, um, but um, for just ease of use, I'm just gonna say cannabis, we know it's the same plant, um, but any testing that I will be talking about is indeed applicable to any um, cannabis or hemp products. So um, there's a lot of tests that need to be done in the um, cannabis hemp testing sector, okay? And um, I have the kind of key ones listed here. So if you send your um, products out for testing um, into a testing lab, you're probably gonna have um, the option to look at potency, pesticides, metals, mycotoxins, terpenes, residual solvent, and microbiological screening. So these tests that we're talking about are on the QC level, right? Telling um, safety and quality of your product. So um, CM has, and Lucidity, have a lot of options to um, cover most of these tests. Um, so as um, the ones highlighted here, um, we can talk about potency, pesticides, metals, mycotoxins, and terpenes. Um, so with the CEM um, band of instruments, you really have a lot of options and flexibility for different types of testing in the um, QC and um, safety sector. So here are the instruments that are most applicable to this industry that we offer here. Um, and I'm going to be touching upon all of them a little bit throughout this presentation. Um, so if we just kind of work from the left to the right there, um, we have um, our edge system. That is a solvent extraction system. So I wanna take a moment here because a lot of people in this industry, when they hear solvent extraction, you're gonna immediately think about extracting the oil, like you know, CBD oil um, from the um, plant itself. And that is not what we're talking about here. Um, that is a big, large scale process extraction. When we talk about solvent extraction here, this is again for the QC side of things, for safety and quality. And we're gonna be looking at things like potency, so your cannabinoids, pesticides, mycotoxins, and terpenes, okay? So you're talking a very small sample size here, um, probably around a gram or so or less, and um, looking for what is in that um, material from the plant to different um, cannabis infused products. We also offer our Mars 6 system, which does microwave digestion, which is very good for metals analysis. Um, and in a lot of states, um, metals um, is regulated. And um, so we'll be talking about that at the tail end of this presentation. And as noted, we're now talking about the lucidity products as well. And Lucidity does the analysis and they have the mini LC, which is a LC UV analysis, um, which is really applicable towards potency. And they have the mini GC, which is a GC FID analysis, which is applicable towards um, potency and terpenes. Um, so you have some options there of um, what is gonna be best suited for your lab. And if you kind of look at those um, potency terpenes, you've seen a lot of them over on the solvent extraction side of things too. So the edge pairs very well with these analysis systems. Um, so we'll be kind of talking about that, them in conjunction as I go throughout this presentation. So, um, before I get into the heart of the different um, instruments and the tests that we can do, I'd like to take a moment to talk about um, this graph you see here, because at CEM, um, we're really um, very heavy on the sample preparation side of things. And there's just a need, if you look at this pie graph, um, this is taken about a few years ago, but it's still very accurate today. We're spending 62% of our time on sample preparation. And that's just not necessary, <clears throat> excuse me guys, I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit. Um, we really need to take sample preparation into the modern, modern sector, right? We need to bring automation. Um, we need to bring ease of use into sample preparation. It's, it's, you know, a lot of times we're still doing a lot of bench top chemistry and um, that just takes a lot of time. It can la lead to error and it's just not very applicable to this cannabis sector where a lot of times we don't have um, PhD chemists or um, trained chemists running these tests. Um, we need just a, you know, a standard technician to be able to come in and run these tests simply and easily. 
And so what I hope I show here today, if you take anything away from this presentation, is how we're taking this and making it simple so that anybody can run, um, even those that might be on um, <clears throat> on the farming side of things, right? Um, I don't know what my audience is here. Um, we probably span a wide variety, but there's probably some farmers out there too that need a quick test to know um, what, you know, what is in their plant. And um, this is gonna be applicable for you guys as well. So we're gonna start talking about the edge and that is the solvent extraction. And here's a quick schematic of what the edge um, does. And what I hope you see is it's not a lot of steps. Right, you have our Q cup, which is the sample holder. You put that together with the Q disc, which enables the filtration. You weigh in your sample, you drop it in the system. The system does the extraction. You take that, you go direct to analysis. So it really is a very straightforward and easy process to do. And I have a video a little later on that will kind of give you a better visual of how the edge actually runs. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits of the edge system. Um, one of the key things is that it's a temperature controlled extraction, and that is particularly important for the cannabis industry because at high temperatures, THCA can convert to THC. And we don't want that happening because we want to know exactly what is in the plant at that time. We don't want to get um, unnecessary high values of um, THC or um, any other cannabinoids that go under that um, process. So it's important to be running at low temperatures and to be able to control that um, temperature. And we were able to do that on the edge system. It also allows for in-cell cleanup. A lot of times, um, you know, these samples are quite dirty and you do need to do some cleanup. Um, as you go through this presentation though, you'll see that it's maybe just an option. Um, maybe the edge has benefits where cleanup isn't necessary, but if you did indeed want to run cleanup, um, you can, and it's simple. And again, that's my biggest takeaway here. I really hope at the end of this presentation, um, you see how simple the different techniques I'm talking about truly are. When you bring automation to the table, <coughs> excuse me guys, really trying to keep my voice here. Um, when you bring automation to the table, you um, gain better efficiency, okay? You um, able to remove the human error, okay? So you don't have any human error in there, but also beyond just that, um, you're doing the same process over and over again. So you're going to get efficiency and you get traceability, you get reporting, you get these things that are needed in this modern world. Um, so there's a lot that automation itself brings to the table. And either furthermore, when you automate it, that technician is freed up to do what they need to do and other things. So you're not just spending all the time doing a manual process during extraction. Um, so you really save time there. Um, even if the overall test is the same in the end, if the technician was able to do two things at once, you're clearly saving time there. And then uh, one of the really nice benefits we've seen with the edge is that we do see less matrix effects. And that kind of goes back up to that cleanup with less matrix effects. Sometimes you don't need to do cleanup. And in the data that I'm presenting here today, we actually didn't do any cleanup and it's really good data. Um, so um, we kind of, um, you know, maybe think about maybe not needing that cleanup step. You can do it if you want to, but you really do see less matrix effects. And sometimes you can get away with not doing any cleanup. So here's a video of the edge. So I'm going to talk through how it runs. I'm a very visual person and um, I like to show you guys how it um, everything runs. So you see Brittany here grabbing our Q-disc. That is our, um, going to allow for our filtration. And she's going to put that Q-cup together. It goes together in seconds. It's just one thread, it can't be cross-threaded, you can't mess it up. It is um, made out of um, hard anodized aluminum. So it's very light and go directly on the analytical balance. You can weigh your sample directly into um, your Q-cup. The racks here you see are very um, interchangeable. So you can um, pull one out and um, be working on a set of samples while another set of samples is running. So it's really easy there. And then you'll see the edge um, takes over. It's gonna take that sample and it's going to put it in that back chamber where the extraction will occur. Now, um, the system does run in series, one right after the other. So um, you do need to be um, cognitive carryover and we'll talk about that later. But the system that actually is gonna come down, create a sealed environment. It's then gonna add the solvent. There are six solvent lines, so you can add it to six different solvents and it's gonna fully wet the sample. Once your sample is fully wet, you have the option of bubbling. Um, this is a great option for a very wet or high moisture samples that add some agitation. Once the bubbling is complete, um, then it's going to pressurize and heat. 
once you've reached a set temperature and or hold time, um, you're then going to, um, your extraction will be done and you're gonna drain through the sample, through that Q disc, which is the filter, through the cooling coil, so you collect at room temperature, and into your extraction vial where you can go direct to analysis. We also have an option of a rinse. This is when solvent is added and drained right through and is immediately collected into um, the sample. Um, it just leads to really good recovery values. So you see at this point, your sample is done, ready to go for analysis. But as I noted earlier, we do run in series and um, we have to be aware of carryover. So we're gonna wash the entire fluidic pathway that saw sample with solvent. So we ensure that no carryover happens. And you'll see the edge um, go to that waste port. So that needle that just did the dispense is gonna go to the waste port in the back right um, hand corner there and is going to wash the system. You see that waste bottle over there on that right hand side. So we're going to ensure no carryover and we're gonna do a washing. At this point, I'm gonna move on to the next sample or um, you're done. So you'll see Brittany here grab the sample. And one of the really good feel good moments for me is that sample that was just in solvent seconds ago. Um, you can look at that and it is bone dry, okay guys? And it has no solvent in it. It's just a good feel good moment. You've had a complete, you've collected everything. You've got a filtered extract ready to go straight to analysis. So I hope you gave, that gave you a good visual of how the edge runs. So, um, you know, I come from a sample prep side of things. And so I take the liberty to um, give you um, details. You know, so often a lot of these presentations cover just the analysis, which is important. Obviously you need good analysis, but sample preparation is so important too. If you don't prepare your samples properly, you don't get good results. Um, so I just like to take the liberty here to give you a few more details so that if you're doing this, you know those tips and tricks of how to set it up properly because it's so key. Um, as I mentioned, we have a Q-disc, which is a sample filtration. The specific Q-disc that we run is a sandwich of Q-discs. At the heart, it has our G1, which is a glass fiber Q-disc that filters down to 0.3 microns. So that's the important piece that you need to know. You're going to get a 0.3 micron filtration out of this. For any of you guys that have worked with glass fiber, um, you may know that it's not very robust. It kind of can pull apart pretty easily. And we're running in a pressurized environment. So to keep the integrity of that glass fiber filter, we put it in a sandwich of cellulose filters. So those C9s are just cellulose filters. They're not doing the filtration. They're just keeping the robustness of that G1. You get 0.3 micron filtration with this filter. Um, Q disc and you use the Q disc regardless of sample, whether you're running hard candy or chocolate or chips or just the plant itself, you're going to use the same filtration disc. At this stage, you would add any sorbents for cleanup if you needed to. Um, as noted, a lot of times you don't need it, but um, you would add it um, after you put in your assembled your cell if you so desired. And the um, system is compatible with any of your standard cleanup. So um, PSA, C18, carbon black, um, any of those materials you can run on the system. At this point, you will add your sample. Um, and you know, 0.2 grams is, is, is enough. I know a lot of times people don't wanna use a lot of the sample up, so you can run very low sample sizes, but you can certainly run more as well. Um, so that is up to um, your test and what you're needed. For the pesticide data, that I am showing here, we did 0.25 grams. So that's just um, what we did for the data that I'm presenting here, but you have some leeway. And in this case, it was a um, hemp sample and we did cryomillet. Again, that's up to your preference. Um, the more um, surface area you have to your sample, the better extraction you're gonna get. So we recommend cryomilling, but um, you don't necessarily have to. Um, you could put just the plant directly in there and extract that as well. That may be suitable for your purposes. And then lastly, we put in a Q-screen. That is just a stainless steel mesh that helps keep the samples submerged in the solvent and just leads to better extraction. So it certainly takes me a lot longer to talk through this than it does to actually assemble it. it comes together in um, mere minutes and um, you're ready to go for extraction. So here is just an example. And in this case, I'm just showing you the potency method that we use. Please know that um, depending on what you're looking for, potency, pesticides, mycotoxins, terpenes, the method may differ, okay? You may use different solvents. Um, you may use some different volumes. 
Um, you may, may or may not use bubbling, okay? So it's just a standard method, um, but we have all pre-programmed methods for you. So no matter what, we're gonna make that easy for you. Um, I just didn't have the time here to go through the different details of the different methods. Um, but for potency, it's just a one cycle method um, where we add methanol. Um, we then add 15 mils of solvent and we heat that to 35 degrees C for three minutes. And then we add an additional five mils of methanol and drain that through. So um, in the end, it's a 20 mil extraction and it took um, around less than seven minutes total. That's including all the washing and everything. And you have a sample ready to go for analysis. Now, as noted, um, we, we do run in series and um, washing is, is key. So honestly, the, in the potency method, I'd say the washing, it, it's almost more important than the, you know, extraction is a pretty simple extraction. Um, the washing to make sure you have no carryover is the key part here. And typically we do a two stage wash where we wash with a um, kind of more potent solvent. And we put that a little bit of temperature and hold time in there to get a good wash. And then we'll pull it right back with the extraction solvent for the second wash where we don't put any heat in there because we want to take it all the temperatures back down to room temperature. Okay, so before I move on to the analysis, or um, I want to talk just a little bit more about um, just this considering winterizing your samples. Um, so this, um, these pictures are courtesy of SciX. We had a collaboration where SciX or SciX ran some samples and they provided these pictures for me. Um, so I wanna just say that, that um, thank you out to SciX for um, kind of giving us some information here regarding this. Now with the edge extraction, you can go direct to analysis, you can. But what we found here is that when we ran a winterization, and you see the pictures there, pre-winterization, -winter all look clear, ready to go. But when we did a winterization, which was negative 20 degrees C freezer for two hours, clearly something happened here. We got some stuff crashing out. And um, whether this affects the actual data is still, you know, um, honestly, when we looked at the data, it looked fairly similar. Um, but for certain tests, I just like to make the note that, um, you know, that you may want to consider winterization. Um, it's going to be, you know, definitely de depending on what your needs are, whether this is important or not. But I just found this really interesting um, that you did see this phenomenon happening with the winterization. So now, before I get to the data, we're going to talk a little bit about the analysis. And this brings in the lucidity products. So the mini LC and or the mini GC. And um, as noted, the mini LC is a routine LC UV system, but it's got some great benefits. And those benefits come in size and ease of use, which I think both are very important to the cannabis industry, particularly um, the farmers out there, particularly the people that need something that is really um, easy to move around, easy to set up and, um, and use and get results quickly. Um, so the small size and weight leads to easy handling, moving around easily, but it also leads to less power consumption, which is a great benefit as well, right? In our world, we want to go green. And there's a lot of, um, you know, benefit to running less power. Um, and also, we really need ease of use. So you'll see that the software is really intuitive. You don't have to be a trained technician. You don't have to have degrees to be able to you know, run the software. Pretty much anybody can pick it up and should be able to run it. Um, it does, the system does have an integrated 20 place auto sampler and um, the installation is self installation. So someone doesn't have to come and install it. You can install it yourself and it installs in 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, guys, you get it out of the box. It's up and running and giving you data. Um, so um, really, you know, we focused on the ease of use here. So here's a quick video of the mini LC. I hope it gives you just a little bit more idea of um, the system and how it runs. It is a binary system. So you have two solvent options there. You saw that at the top and a washing bottle. Um, hopefully, you know, it's kind of hard here to see how small it is, but it's about the size of a printer, guys. So it's really not very large at all. And um, here we're gonna cover that self-installation. So all you gotta do is you see the connections here in the back, it's not a lot. They're all hand fittings, um, just um, plugging it in the power, the connections to the computer, and you're good to go. This is the column holder. Standard columns can be used on here. So you're not limited to what columns you run. And it, um, it is a column heater, so you can heat your columns as well. 
Um, so really simple and straightforward there. Again, the integrated auto sampler. So, so no need for an additional auto sampler. It's all right here for you, um, up to 20 samples and um, in this nice little box. And then here's the software, all very um, pictorial. You just, um, you know, really, like I said, self-intuitive. You just click through it, start your method. And then um, you always have real-time view of everything going on here. So it's a really great um, format to see what's going on. Easy integration, easy reporting, so that you have a readout of what is in your sample very quickly. Um, so I hope that gave you a good visual of what the mini LC is and um, you know the, the power and speed and simplicity that it brings um, to these, this cannabis industry. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here on the mini GC, um, but I, you know, I do need to note it because it can be used for potency as well. And it has all those same benefits of the mini LC that I just um, talked about. In this case, this is a um, routine GC FID. So FID is the detector here. And again, it is small and easy to use. It's got all the same benefits of easy handling. Um, in this case, with a smaller oven, you have faster ramping and cooling times and um, less power consumption, the same thing there. Um, easy use is still there. Um, the column is, is so game changer here, guys. And you know, kind of pun there with the game. It's like putting in a game cartridge um, into a console. That's how simple the column change is. Um, you get the same platform on the software, um, the same self-installation. And in this case, there is an auto sampler, but it's just magnetically attached. It goes on really simple. And again, all self-installation here as well. Another great thing with the mini LGC is that it can pair well with the Lucidity Mini Gas. Um, with GC, you need a carrier gas, and so often you need these big tanks, and um, that can be inconvenient, especially for um, a lab that's not really set up. So with the mini gas, it generates hydrogen and high purity air on demand. It's all you need to run the system. No tanks required. So uh, like, guys, all you need is a little bit of DI water. You fill up the DI water, and in 30 minutes, you're getting um, analysis with these two systems. The lab does not need to provide anything else. That is, everything will be provided by Lucidity and these two systems. So it's just a really nice package together. Um, so for those of you that's got any, um, you know, to do potency on the mini GC, um, GC also terpenes analysis. Um, so these are some great options for those of you needing to do those tests. So um, now let's kind of take a step back. Um, and talk about, because um, the data that I am presenting here um, was done on an LC system. Um, so I um, wanted to show you a standard um, LC method that is very applicable for cannabinoids, okay? So again, I just like to give the details. So in case you guys wanted to be able to repeat what I'm talking about here, you can go back to these slides and be able to say, okay, well, column, um, flow rate, and, and, and so forth. So we are using a ResTech column here, very standard column. We do a 50 microliter injection. We're running a flow rate of two milliliters per minute, and we're monitoring at 220 nanometers. We're running isocratic um, at 75% water with five millimolar amino ammonium formate and 1.1% formic acid and 25% acetonitrile with 0.1% formic acid. So very standard method here. And that's one thing I like to say is that it is really plug and play with the methods out there. So if you have a method, you should be able to look it up and be able to um, program them then very simply into the system. And so here is some um, mini LC results, um, just to kind of show you, you get um, to a reference chromatogram of cannabinoids that we're getting good peak shape and good um, separation. I will note there's a few more cannabinoids in the reference than, than we did on the mini LC. So um, if you're counting total peaks, you'll see there's not exactly the same amount of peaks, uh, but for the cannabinoids we looked at, we got a very um, comparable chromatogram. And um, so here are some actual potency results. So now what we're talking about is an extraction that was done on the edge. We did compare that to the hand method, which is a very common method to be done um, for potency analysis. And what you can see is that we got comparable results across the board for the different cannabinoids when we did an extraction on the edge compared to the hand method. And the big deal that we brought to the table there is automation. Okay, guys, so we removed that human error. Um, we freed that technician up to be doing um, other things, and the edge took care of the extraction. Um, 
So also, this is some potency, which I believe is a you know obviously the key test. Everybody needs to be doing potency out there, um, but the edge is useful for other things as well, such as pesticides, mycotoxins, and terpenes. So here is some pesticide data, um, which I really think shows you the strength of the edge, right? Because a potency extraction is fairly easy. Um, now, pesticide extraction is a little bit more challenging, specifically when you talk about the different types of um, samples you've got there. So um, in this case, we ran flour, cookie, chips, granola bars, chocolate, hard candy, it's a wide variety of different cannabis infused products there, including the plant itself. And we did not do any cleanup and we ran the exact same edge method for everything. Um, and, and guys note, this goes back to that collaboration with SciX. So this pesticide data here is um, courtesy of SciX. So again, big thank you to, to SciX for that because this is some phenomenal data of um, great recovery values for a wide variety of pesticides. In this case, it was the Oregon State. Um, so for those of you in the, um, you know, know that the different states have different lists, this is the Oregon State list of pesticides um, that we looked at here for these different products. Um, and so, um, you know, really applicable. So for those of you that need to be doing pesticide analysis and potency, the edge is a really great option for you guys. So I am going to change gears here because I've been talking about on the extraction side of things and, um, you know, the components of what is in that sample, the cannabinoids and the pesticides and so forth. Um, but why is metal analysis important for cannabis? Well, metals, you know, basically they can be in these plants too and they are regulated and you need to make sure that those metals are not present at the levels that um, you know, regulated levels. And it's not just the plant itself, guys. And I think you saw that with the up to this point in the um, presentation, because um, we talked about the cannabis infused products and so forth. But here, going even beyond that, right, you've got the water, the soil, the fertilizers, the ingredients, everything, um, the delivery devices, the vaporizers, right? There's so many different things um, and this is true, not just for metals, but cannabis is a hyper accumulator. And so um, you need to be looking at all these different things. And it's a wide variety. You can get overwhelming very quickly. Um, but again, what CEM brings to the table is simplicity. So we're going to be able to um, do this in a very simple format um, to get this metals analysis that is important. And a big deal here is that um, the, we have a first action method, an AOAC OMA 2021.03 method um, that is applicable towards cannabis products, the plant material, concentrates, finished products. Um, you can see the required elements there and the optional elements. Um, so this is huge, guys, um, because this is what we need across the board. We need some AOAC methods for potency. And, and, and this is happening, right? This is all happening because we need harmonized methods. We need everybody to be doing the same test because right now it's kind of the wild west out there and different places are doing different things and that's not good for this industry. We really need to harmonize this so that everybody's doing the same thing so that we get accurate results, right? We need safety, we need quality. And this is important that we're getting to these official methods from AOAC that are being released in the sector. So this is a big deal. Um, just quickly, um, the digestion is done on a Mars 6. You can digest up to 40 samples. Um, I have a video coming up and we'll talk about the difference um, of different samples. In some cases, it's 24 batches, batch per sample, but high throughput regardless. Um, we have the pre-programmed cannabis methods in there. Again, we're taking the thinking process out of that. We're gonna provide the methods for you as well as onboard instructional videos. And these comments are true for everything, for all the products we're talking here. Um, we really um, do our best to try to provide you the most information possible um, for the products that we're offering you and in, in ease of use, right? That again, that's what your takeaway here. So, um, and this is just a picture of the samples that we have run um, microwave digestion on. It's obviously a wide variety of samples, very um, common to what we did is wide variety of samples on all of our products. And now I am going to take a breather and let Sam, um, who is the expert here and co-author on that AOAC um, method that we just talked about, talk to you a little bit more about the Mars and um, microwave digestion. Whoops.
Hello everyone and welcome to our lab. As we were talking about with our AOAC method, you can digest all of these different sample types using our one AOAC method. So some of the samples you might come across are plant material, such as, you know, cannabis plant material, some high protein samples like cannabis beef jerky, samples high in carbohydrates like cannabis candy, and samples high in fat, cannabis hemp butter. We also have manufacturing intermediates like cannabis uh, concentrates and distillates and isolates. These are some of the more difficult to digest, but we can digest all of them using our method. Some more isolates. And tinctures are also fair game with our method. You have terpene tinctures and CBD tinctures. Personal care products like hemp soap. Also um, CBD pain relief cream and lip balm. And last but not least, beverages and food products so like coffee, wine, any type of beverage you can digest using this method, and you know any type of food product, cannabis, dry food product, you can digest using the same method. All right, we're going to be doing all of this in this Express Plus Mars Express Plus digestion vessel. All right, it's a 24 place vessel using Teflon 110 mil vessels. They are three piece assembly with a liner, a plug, and a cap. So the liner holds the sample, the plug is for moderate, moderating pressure throughout the run, and the cap has a hole in it to allow for venting of gases. Let's say you are a higher throughput cannabis lab and you typically get a lot of the same samples. Let's say you get a lot of plant material samples. You could potentially do this method in our 40 plates Mars Express 75 mil vessels, right? These are very similar to the Express Plus, again, just a three piece Teflon vessel. These are only 75 mil, but you can run 40 of them at once, and that's big. But you can't just run any 40 samples. You can't run concentrates with your plant material. If you want to run concentrates or oils, you're going to have to run those separately. You can run food, beverages, plant material, personal care products, all of those together in 40 position but together at once, but you have to run the concentrates in the oil separately. All right? Now let's actually add some sample and show you guys how we do this. So you take your liner and you will typically for plant plant material we would usually use whey paper, whey boats. You want to make sure that you know, if you're using these types of things, you want to make sure that you're not running into static issues. So we may sometimes put our vessels in front of an anti-static ionizer like this. That really helps to stop your samples from sticking to the sides of the vessels or sticking to the uh, weight paper itself. All right. A good technique for weight paper is to fold it in half. It makes it easier to dispense it into your vessels when the time comes. All right. And there are a few other techniques that we like to use for you know some of the harder to some harder samples to put into your vessels like the uh, creams or the butters. We typically might use a plastic spatula like this. If you use any type of plastic uh, scoopulas or you know dispenseware, you want to make sure that you clean it beforehand using blue acid. For liquid samples, we like to use these pipe transfer pipettes. And again, you want to make sure you clean these beforehand using dilute acid, so 10% nitro will work great. All right, and make sure when you're adding these samples, you get the sample to the very bottom of the vessel. That is very important. You want to make sure that your sample is completely submerged in acid. All right, some of the concentrates and oils like to stick to the sides, and you want to use these tools to make sure you get it to the bottom. I've got some plant material conveniently already weighed out for me. This, well, first let me show you. The plant material, if it comes in my bag, it may not be very homogenous, right? You want to mix this bag up, tumble it a few times, shake it up a little bit, make sure that everything gets nice and homogenous in there. Otherwise, your stems might sit on top of everything and the shaky stuff will go to the bottom. You want to make sure you tumble it a few times and get it nice and homogenous before you sample And when you do sample it, don't just take all from one spot. Make sure you take a little bit from here, from there, and get a little bit of everything so that you get a nice representative sample. All right. 
right, so let's take our pre weighed out sample and add it to the bottom of the vessel. All right, let's take this over to the hood and add acid. So, for our method, we call for 9 mils of nitric and 1 mil of HCl. You can see here we have acid in glass bottles. We do not want to use acid in glass bottles. Glass is inherently dirty and it will contaminate your samples. So, we tend to use either our own distilled acid that comes in Teflon bottles, or you can order your own ultra pure, you know, reagent grade or trace metal grade acids from a few different sources. All right? So, for adding the acid, we tend to use micro pipettes just because we know the tips are clean and we know they're very active. Let me go ahead and add some acid. Now, once we've added our acid, we'll let it sit and pre-digest for up to 15, maybe even 30 minutes, depending on how reactive your sample is. If it's reacting at room temperature, it's a good idea to just go ahead and let pre-digest. If it's not, then you can just go ahead and seal it up and go. But for most of these cannabis and cannabis throughout products, they're going to react. So just let them sit for at least 15 minutes. All right. One thing you'll notice here is uh, actually I have some cannabis plant material are already added to this tube with acid in here. This is 10 mils of acid. You can see, actually, that the plant material is creeping up out of the acid, right? That's not good. You want to make sure that it's submerged. So you might swirl it around it a little bit just to get it all mixed together so that it runs well. You see? It's nice and submerged. All right? What we do not want is to use too little acid because then it will all be spent during the reaction. You can see here, this is only three mils of acid. It's not going to completely submerge in three mils, and you're going to run into problems, and it's just not going to completely digest. So, to get around that, we recommend using at least five mils of acid. We would prefer that you would use ten. All right, so now that we've got our sample pre-digested, let's go ahead and add our plug on top, and then pour down our cap. If you gave this to five different lab workers, they would all torque it down, hand torque it down at five different, you know, five different pressures. So what we want to do is use our hand torquing device so that every vessel gets the same amount of torque. And what that'll do is prevent certain vessels from taking off and overreacting while they're stoned. It'll make sure everything is nice and flat and reacts well together. All right. So now that we've got our vessel torqued, let's go ahead and put it into the turntable. Make sure it's nice and flush, and then we'll take it over to the microwave. All right, so we'll take our turntable, put it in the microwave. Shut the door. Then you have two different me uh, method directories to pick from. We're gonna pick the one-touch directory that comes with all of CEM's pre-programmed methods, and you'll find the cannabis one-touch method near the top, in the seeds, obviously. You press that method, and that's it. You hit start, and the unit will determine how many vessels you've got in there, what kind of vessels you're using, and how much power to apply so that you get there safely, right? So let's go ahead and look at the run history of a previous run of run. You can see here, the power starts off low, as does the temperature, which you would expect, and it slowly ramps it up to temperature. We call that ramp to temperature. It's a very safe way to get our samples all to temperature, you know, everything relatively at the same temperature and saving pressure safely. So once we get to the end of the ramp, we're at 210 degrees, and you'll notice that the green line, the power there, is modulating to make sure that the red line, the power, or sorry, the temperature stays steady. All right? We want to hold it at 210 for 15 minutes. After that, the samples are digested. They'll go into a 15 minute cool down, and after the 15 minutes is up, you're able to pull them out and take a look at your digestions. Here I'll show you some of the result, uh, details of our run previously. We ran 14 vessels, and you can see here, 
the check marks. That just shows that your your sample made it a temperature. If you see any X's there, it'll also give you a temperature that that vessel reached. And that way you know, oh, my, temp my sample did not make it a temperature. That's why it did not digest. Really helpful tool. All right, so now that our samples are digested, let's pull them out of the microwave and take a look. All right. Now that the reaction has subsided, there is still pressure in these vessels, right? We want to make sure we're safe when we open them. Again, there's a hole in the cap to allow fumes to vent out. You want to point that away from you and vent in a fume hood, right? Like this. You can see the gas is coming out of there. That's what you should expect. There will pretty much always be some type of pressure built up during the reaction. It's usually carbon dioxide and NOx gases that are formed. All right. Now that we've opened it up, we want to dilute this up. And the way you dilute it up matters. You don't want to use any type of glass. So the two different ways you can dilute it up are volumetrically and gravimetrically. If you're using gra uh, volumetrics, you want to make sure you use Teflon volumetrics that are pretty clean. You know, rinse them over a week in dilute acid before you use them. Don't just use reuse and reuse and reuse because you'll get contamination from your samples. All right. We'll move to the uh, line. This is a Class A volumetric. You want to make sure you use Type One ASTM water. Another way to dilute is gravimetrically, and this is what we use in our method. It tends to be more accurate. That's why we use it. You want to make sure you pre-soak these containers and dilute maybe 10%, 5% nitric acid for a day or two before you use them, just to make sure they're clean. Even though we're pretty sure it's the ones we get are clean beforehand. So you'll pour your sample into there, and you want to quantitatively transfer. We typically do three rinses out of the liner and into the vessel, or and into the centrifuge tube. So obviously you'll have this container pre-teared before you add anything to it so that you can dilute to weight. For our method, we've diluted to 50 mils using 10 mils of acid. You could get by again though with as little as 5 mils of acid, depending on your samples. Alright, so three rinses. Just to make sure that we transfer everything, nothing stuck to the side. You want to make sure that you get everything out of there. All right, and then we'll take it over to the balance and dilute to 50 grams. And we're done. All right, so to recap, you can run all of these different samples. Our method encompasses all the different cannabis and cannabis derived products, including but not limited to plant material, foods, beverages consumer products, and manufacturing intermediates, right? So you can do all of these different samples using our Mars Express Plus vessel set. You can also use the Mars Express vessel set if you're okay with taking out your concentrates and your oils and running those separately. All right, if you want more tips and tricks on how to perhaps weigh your samples up, visit our uh, cm.com in the lab, cm.com in the lab, for further tips and tricks, and I believe that's it. Hello. Okay. Well, I hope that you guys all had, um, you know, fun watching that video, and now we all, um, I think, are quite well experts in microwave digestion for cannabis. Um, Sam was very thorough in that video. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of conclude um, the talk that I've given here today. And I hope you've seen that CEM and Lucidity offer a wide variety of products that can really make um, cannabis testing rapid, simple, and efficient. Um, we talked about the edge for extraction of um, cannabinoids, pesticides, mycotoxins, and terpenes, and that can pair very well with the um, Lucidity products either the LCUV for potency or the GCFID um, for potency and terpenes. Um, and again, um, you know, for those farmers out there, don't be afraid of these systems. 
Um, these systems are, um, again, self-installable, easy to use, and you don't have to be a trained technician to run them. They really bring simplicity to this sector. And then um, obviously we just watched that video on microwave digestions. We have an awesome option there that goes along with an AOAC method. So um, before um, I go to the questions and answers, um, I just really like to say um, that CEM is where you are. And this is something I have been with CEM now for 15 years. And I am so proud of um, the fact that we are where you are. We're going to help you from a sales, service, and application support. And that's not true. There may be some international people in this audience. It's not true just on the domestic sale scale, but on the international scale as well. Um, I um, am communicating on a daily basis on a global scale, um, making sure that these products are um, satisfactory to our customers out there. And um, CEM really does go the extra mile um, with our products and our support. Um, and so that's just, again, something I'm very proud to talk about. Um, and I have to thank the people behind this talk. Um, I don't have the SIAX um, team I'm representing here, but again, huge um, thank you to them as well. But here at CEM, we have myself, our senior scientist, Candice Cashman, our product specialist, Brittany Fessler, our application scientist, Benedict Liu. Um, and then on the lucidity side, we have the president, Mike Collins, and the R&D scientist, Daniel Iverson. And um, we can all be reached at molecular.support at cem.com anytime. Again, we're here to assist you. So if you have any questions, please reach out to that email address, and I would be happy to address them. Also, go to cem.com. Um, you just saw a portion of In the Lab with Sam. We have a lot of video series on all of this. Um, so you can see videos. Um, ben is... Um, in our Will It Extract series, and uh, we have a Will It Digest series, and we have a lot of application notes and so forth available. Um, so please go to either the um, CM or the Lucidity websites to um, gain more information on anything that I've talked about here today. Um, so with that, I am going to pass it over to Leanne um, for any questions and answers, um, questions you may have. All right, well, thank you, Alicia. Uh, and thanks for, for the great presentation. We had a lot of questions come in, so I'm just going to kick it off at the start. The first question, does ed edge extraction work for GC sample prep too? So yeah, that's a great question. And, and yeah, it does. Um, so, you know, it depends on exactly what sample prep you're doing. If you're talking about residual solvents, that's going to be something different, right? Um, you're going to be using a headspace auto sampler and you've got a very volatile sample. Um, so um, that may not be as applicable. But if your extract or what you're writing is in a liquid, um, then indeed, yes, you can do the extraction on the edge. And again, the edge is very temperature controlled. So if you do have some volatiles in there, you can keep the temperature really low so you cannot lose those volatiles and you can go direct to GC analysis, say for terpenes. That would be a very applicable um, application. Um, our auto sampler on the mini GC is a liquid handler auto sampler. However, you can do manual headspace injections. Um, so it's not limited to um, li um, liquid extractions, but if you do want the, um, auto sampler, then that is um, liquid samples. All right, excellent, thank you. Now, how many samples can be run in the edge batch? That's a great question as well. Uh, so it runs up to 12. Okay, so you can be set up up to 12, but you can program up to 24. So we really recommend people get two racks because you can set up and program 12, 24 samples. And then at the end of the first 12, it just um, dings or lights, depending on how, whatever you want your visual to be, lets you know. And then all you've got to do is pull your rack out, slide in your other rack, hit start, and it's going to run the next 12. Um, so you can program up to 24, but the rack itself holds 12. So Alicia, another question regarding numbers is about how long might it take to run 20 samples? Um, I guess I'll cover the different techniques here. Um, so on the edge, it is approximately about seven minutes per sample. Um, so uh, I'm gonna do some bad math here, but you know, in under an hour and a half, you're gonna be done, I think, with those um, samples. And then you can go direct to analysis there. So um, one thing that's great is you can access your sample that is um, done immediately. So you can take that sample, so seven minutes, you can take your sample, you can inject it on your LC. Okay, and then the LC run is about 20 minutes. So in under a half hour, you have information. 
that is useful to you because um, you can go um, you know, run it that way. Um, so yeah, LC method, approximately 12, 20 minutes. GC method is going to be in that same time frame. And um, for the digestion, so on the Mars side of things, um, that batch is going to take about an hour to run the batch. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, is the edge sample that clear after a cannabis extraction? And I think they were referring to the video when Brittany held yeah. up the, the clear stand. Yeah, so no. Um, if there are pigments, specifically if you're, um, you know, green with your cannabis, it's going to be quite green. Okay, so it's not going to be clear. Um, if you add a lot of carbon black in there to remove pigments, then that's going to remove the pigments, you're going to clear thing. Um, but yeah, we're not, you're going to extract those pigments just like as you normally would. And um, yeah, you, your, your extracts can be a variety of different colors. In fact, the first um, edge we ever sold into the um, cannabis industry, um, we sold it on um, color alone. Um, he did the first extract and he saw the vibrant green that we were able to extract. He's like, done. I, you know, if you can get that visual, then I don't even need to see what's in it. Um, so, so yeah, that um, might be a little bit misleading in that video. I maybe should have, and I usually do time-wise here. I just had so much to talk about. I usually show you actual pictures of, of the cannabis. Um, so, so yeah, um, definitely will be um, colored. Okay. Good to know. And will there be a lot of solvent loss during the extraction? So no, um, really, especially with the um, very, um, you know, the solvents we're using here, like methanol and acetonitrile, they're not very volatile. Um, so really, if you've got a 20 mil method, you're going to want to confirm that you um, got those 20 mils in the end, because obviously the volume does matter for quantitative analysis. But typically, it's just a visual saying, okay, yep, I got my 20 mils and you move on. Um, really, you don't lose anything at all. So how do you keep that final volume accurate? Um, so that's a good question. And um, so if you, you know, in the most detailed way, if you want to pour it into like a graduated cylinder and really make sure and dilute up, um, that's another thing you can dilute or concentrate to a known volume. Um, so that is up to the preference of what you're doing and what kind of concentration range you need for your analysis. But typically for both potency and pesticides, um, we simply confirm our volume and we have um, a graduated vial that we can collect in. And so we just kind of look at that graduation and then move forward. Okay. Um, can the auto sampler be adapted to fit more than 20 samples? I think this was on the mini GC. Yeah, the mini LC has a 20 sample auto sampler and the mini GC has a 16 place auto sampler. And at this stage, no, that is um, all that we have at the moment. Um, so that's something with time that I think the lucidity will add um, as um, in the future. But at this moment in time, the fairly new products, um, it is limited to 20 on the mini LC and 16 on the mini GC. All righty. So, um... Here's another one about the uh, pesticide analysis. What are the detection levels and matrix concentration of the pesticide analysis? Do you have that information? A lot of people are asking for some specific detail about the pesticide data that you shared. Yeah, and, and, and I don't want to miss say here because we've done a lot of pesticide work over the years. And so I've got a lot of different numbers in my head at the moment. And as noted, I have a cold. Um, so I would um, encourage you to reach out to um, look at our application notes online um, because all of those details are going to be in our application notes. So um, we have got oh my goodness, maybe 10 different application notes specific to pesticides, um, you know, and so there's a lot of information there and that will cover everything in um, the standards we use, the spiking levels, um, matrix um, effects and so forth. All of that is covered in the um, application notes. Excellent, thank you. Um, all right, so now let's, I'm gonna see if there are any more. Do you still need catchers for GC after edge extraction? So no, we're not doing catchers at all. Um, in fact, it replaces the need for that, okay? So um, really the edge is not catchers, it's an alternative to catchers, but we have found that extraction on the edge, and even as I noted, the data I so showed there didn't have cleanup. So no cleanup necessary, and we went direct to analysis. Um, so yeah, we are taking all of those steps of the catchers um, out off, off the table, you don't need to do them. All right, uh, let's see, could you share QC data for pesticides? We already answered that one. Um, let's see. Now, I think the next set of questions starts getting into the digestion stuff. And so um, the first question is, can you explain the reason the extracts and oils need to be run separately from other samples? 
Um, yeah, I, just the extracts and the oils, they just require a higher temperature for a good digestion. They're just harder to digest. And so um, you just need to keep them separate so you can bring that batch to a higher temperature for that particular method. And Alicia, if it's okay, I'm going to add on to that. So yeah, go ahead. Samson, more about the video. digestion. I do a little bit more. I, I, and I'm Leanne. I'm a co-author on the AOAC method as well. So I've, I've lived this work. Um, so in the video, Sam showed two different vessel sets. He showed the Mars Express Plus, which is a 110 mil vessel set. And then he showed the Mars Express, which is a 75 mil vessel set. So if you're using the Mars Express Plus vessel set, that 110 mil, because of the larger uh, vessel size, you get 24 samples in a run. You can run 24 samples and you can mix and match food and flour and um, extracts and oils and everything in that vessel set. If you're using the smaller volume vessel, um, like the Mars Express that has a 75 mil, um, because you're running more samples, you can run up to 40 samples in that one. Because of that, you're going to need to pull out your extracts and your oils and just run your food separate and then your extracts and your oils separate because of the need for additional microwave energy to break down those samples because they are just so darn tough. So if you're doing a lot of mixed stuff, go with the Mars Express Plus vessel set and you can run everything in one run. Um, if you're doing you know, a lot more high throughput, more plant material, foods, edibles, that kind of stuff, go with the Mars Express and you can do 40 in a batch. So uh, the next question is, um, again, on the digestion side of thing, it says, what do you do with samples that don't meet temperature criteria after the run? Um, and Alicia, if you want me to jump in and answer that one too, I can. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do. Um, the nice thing about sample preparation on both sides of, of the fence, whether it be extraction or digestion, um, you tend to get very great visual cues as to whether or not your uh, digestion uh, is going to be suitable. So if you see particulate floating in your sample um, after you've diluted it, um, in, as Sam showed, we dilute up to 50 mils or 50 grams with uh, deionized water. Um, if you see black particulate, that's an indication that the sample did not get hot enough and it did not get solubilized. The matrix was not solubilized. You'd have to rerun and redigest that one. Um, but sometimes um, the method that we developed goes up to 210 degrees and that's hot enough to get even those extracts and the oils into solution. So if you have a plant material sample that only reached 204 degrees, there's a pretty good chance that it's fully solubilized and it's a nice, clear, clean uh, digest at the end. You can go ahead and run it. If something looks a little bit screwy, then maybe redigest it. Um, but you know, that's, there's a great visual indicator. Once you've diluted it up, if it's nice and clear and free of particulate, then you may have actually fully digested the sample even though you didn't hit the 210 degree temperature set point. So let's see if I have any more questions because I think we are at the top, we're actually two, two minutes over. Um, so I think I probably should wrap up the questions right now. Um, if you have any additional questions, please continue to submit them. Uh, we'll respond via email um, for anything that was left unanswered. Um, and Alicia, I'll, uh, I'll pass it back to you and to Bridget uh, for final closing. Okay, um, I guess, thank you for tuning in. I, I will, I'll answer all the questions you um, set forth. So I look forward to that. And um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you guys uh, for um, an amazing uh, talk. And uh, we appreciate all of our participants for taking time out of their day. and. Uh, for tuning in for our this session, and we hope that you'll be able to uh, tune in next week. We have a uh, another uh, uh, talk, but um, anyway, I thank you, and I look forward to seeing you guys at the conference as well. <laughs>